morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah to the King. Bless him. For he is worthy. He is worthy. Hallelujah to the King. Glory to God. Good morning. This is your morning medicine. Look, I know it's Friday, but you know what? And I don't know what we say for Friday. Thank God for another opportunity. We don't just thank God that it's Friday, but Friday is another opportunity to lift up the Lord. Amen. Are you ready for your medicine? We can't, man. We need it for the weekend. Y'all know that. This weekend, we need it. Today's prescription comes from Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. And the Bible says, Does not wisdom cry out, and understanding lift up her voice? Does not wisdom cry out, and understanding lift up? Her voice. I love Proverbs chapter 8. Well, actually, I love every book of the Bible. So y'all know I, I say that a lot. Because the word is just so good. Okay, okay, okay. Let me get on, stay on track. Stay on track. Does not wisdom cry out? I love the fact that in Proverbs chapter 8, God, or throughout Proverbs, God personifies wisdom. God makes wisdom as if a person. It makes wisdom as if she is a female and she cries out. Many scriptures, you'll see that God will use wisdom. In the next verse, he'll say she. And often he relates wisdom um, in form of a person. And I love that because it makes wisdom more identifiable. It makes wisdom more that you can relate because it's personified. And when you look at Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1, the Bible says, Does not wisdom cry out? And understanding lift up her voice. Notice that the Bible says, Lift up her voice. The Lord is bringing us an attention of wisdom personified because we can understand when a person cries out. When a person cries out, we can all relate and correlate to that picture of a person crying out. Because when a person cries out, that signifies that we need to pay attention because they're crying out for a reason. They're crying out for a reason. They're not just crying out for nothing. They're crying out because something they are saying needs to be heard. Something they are saying needs to be heard. So the question then becomes, why does God personify wisdom? in context of that he wants her to be heard. He says that wisdom cries out and she says something. So God, I believe God personifies this for us to get that understanding. But we really need to understand what wisdom is saying, what wisdom is crying out. Because if a person is crying that should put us on alert status that whatever's coming out their mouth, it's of an urgency. So when the Bible says wisdom cries out, she lifts up her voice. God is saying that he wants us to pay attention because what wisdom is saying is of urgency. And it's important that we really grab hold because if you miss the cry, You can end up in places that God did not attend, intend for us to be because he sent wisdom out to cry. He sent his wisdom. He sent the ability for us to obtain knowledge and for us to apply the cry. 
So then the question begs, what exactly is wisdom crying out? We learn that it needs to be heard. We understand that it's of significance. And I want to break down a couple of things because we have a tendency not to hear the cry. We have a tendency not to hear what wisdom is crying out, what wisdom is warning. And we really need to take heed to this because if wisdom cries, that means that they're trying to point us to something God is trying to communicate to us. Remember Proverbs chapter one says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So wisdom has all wisdom, re, wisdom always reverence the Lord, always. So when wisdom cries, it's an attempt to get us to reverence an area that we're not reverencing. We're not reverencing the God in the manner that we need to be reverencing. That's why wisdom is crying out. So what is wisdom communicating? What is wisdom crying out that we need to pay attention to? What is wisdom saying that we need to take heed to? I love it. Because during these times, we really need to hear what wisdom is saying and not what I am saying. We need to hear what wisdom is saying and not what the world is saying. Because wisdom will always point me back to God. Because if we, ha we have to be honest with ourselves, that it's e we, we can easily fall out of line. We can easily fall out of step with God. Based on circumstances, situations, we can become emotionally riled up to where we stop hearing what wisdom is crying out. We can get so entangled in a thing that we, we are unable to hear what wisdom is crying out about that thing. So I want in this morning, Metis, for us to take a second for us to ask ourselves, do we hear wisdom crying out? Do you hear wisdom crying out? And if so, do you hear what wisdom is saying? Because you know sometimes that we can hear the cry, but ignore the words. We can hear the cry, but ignore the words. I remember when I was a little younger in my mother's house, and I remember... When I'd be in my, my room playing a video game and, and my mother would be on the other end of the house and she'd be crying out. She'd be, ye she'd be yelling my name. And I'd act like I didn't hear the cry. I'd act like I didn't hear the words because what she was saying, I just didn't want to do. So I'd act like I, I didn't hear the cry. And, and let's let y'all know, that always have me end up in some trouble. Trust me, when she came close, I didn't play the game no more. Okay, that's a whole nother. But wisdom cries out. So I want to take some time for us to really take heed to some things that wisdom is saying and why we don't listen. First off is because we're too in tuned to other things. We're too in tune. As I made the example that I was so in tune into the video game that I didn't want to hear what wisdom was crying out. And I'm using my mother as a personification of wisdom. I didn't want to hear it because I didn't want to give up the video game. And sometimes we don't hear wisdom crying because some things were so locked into that it drowns out God's voice. We're so emotionally tied into that thing we're so emotionally connected to that thing that we can't hear the cry of wisdom trying to warn us, wisdom trying to get us out in the place that we're in because we're so connected to that thing that we've lo we're losing the reverence of God. Come on now. You can be so connected to the election that you're missing the reverence. You can be so connected to a party 
that you forget you're even a Christian. Oh, you don't forget it by words, but you forget it by action. I heard what my mother said, but what she said was come here, but yet I didn't come. You can be one by words, but you forget through action because you can be so tuned in and locked in. I won't hear what wisdom is saying. I won't hear what wisdom is crying out. I can be so tuned into a thing that it's unable for me to hear a thing. When wisdom cries. And I love that because it's a self-examination because have you lost sight of what wisdom is crying out because you're so tuned in to that thing? Name your thing that you're no longer able to hear what wisdom is saying. You no longer hear the cry. You no longer hear the warning. You no longer hear what wisdom. Matter of fact, you even lost sight of the voice because you're so locked into that thing. And you forget what wisdom cries. Look, at I'm just going to read a couple of scriptures. If y'all don't mind. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 says, Do everything without complaining, grumbling, and arguing, so that you may be blameless and pure children of God who are faultless in a crooked and perverted generation among whom you shine like stars in the world by holding firm to the word of life. The Bible says do everything without this. It says do everything without arguing, complaining, grumbling. God says to do everything as a believer to do everything. But yet have you forgot that's wisdom crying out for us to not do this. But yet you're so in tune with it that's all you do is argue. Complain about the results. Complain about your situation. Complain about your circumstance. And you complain so much. You argue so much. You grumble so much that you drown out the cry. You don't want to hear it no more because what? You're too locked in. So you don't even hear it anymore. I'm saying, do you hear wisdom crying? Do you hear wisdom crying out? And do you hear what she is saying? Because it's a reason why she's saying what she's saying. Did you forget that as Christians, the Bible says to go out, Matthew chapter 28, and make disciples of Christ? Did you forget that we're supposed to be out here being the light unto the world, salt unto the world? As we learn in our Bible study, salt is a preservative, but also salt brings flavor. And the world is in need of a flavoring. Well, what flavoring are you adding to it? Because wisdom cries out and tells you the type of flavor, the type of seasoning that's needed. But because of where you are, you're adding your own flavor. Did you forget that we're called to be the light, but yet are, is your light shining? And if your light is shining, what type of light is it shining? Is it the light that Christ is calling? I'm saying, do you hear wisdom crying out? Because the Bible says that we are to make disciples, but how are we making disciples? Is preaching the gospel your, your main priority? Have you even mentioned Christ? Do you even show the attributes, the character of Christ as a witness of Christ? Or are you too busy lifting up your agenda? Are you too busy lifting up your understanding, your race? Are you too busy? Did you forget about the gospel? And the very reason we are in a predicament we're in is because Romans 1, chapter 18, verse 30 says that the world has suppressed the truth of Christ. 
They no longer give him glory. They exchange the truth for a lie. The Bible says he is no longer first. Did you forget that sin is the issue? Not skin is the issue. It's a sin problem, not a color problem. But did you forget? Wisdom cries out because wisdom says they need to know Christ because that's the core of it. Because the Bible says in John chapter 8, who the son sets free and he's come to set the world free of what? Sin. Not skin. The God Bible says sin is the issue. The root of racism is sin. You can go out here and yell and argue all you want. You can go out here and all that, hold up how many picket signs, and I'm not knocking those things. But what I'm saying, that's not going to get to the root of the thing. The root of the thing is inviting Christ in people's life. The root of the thing is praying for people. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Matthew chapter 5, pray for those. Come on now, pray for those who persecute. Pray for those who insult. Pray for your enemies. But yet you forgot. Because if you deem another race the enemy, the question then becomes, what are you doing? Wisdom cries out and says, you should pray. But yet, do you do more arguing, more grumbling? Bitterness spews from your heart. Hatred spews from your mouth. Where's the prayer? Because wisdom cries out and says pray. Why? Because wisdom is trying to communicate to us that prayer will not only solve their problem, it'll also solve our heart problem. And it'll guard our hearts for it is the wellspring of life. It'll guard our heart from allowing those issues, those issues externally to affect us internally. I'm saying wisdom cries out, but yet are you taking heed to what wisdom is saying? Wisdom cries out and, and tells us to have a balance to not Call evil good, but yet when you're so in tune, you'll start calling evil good. Dismissing because you're more connected to the party. God says, do you hear wisdom crying out? Wisdom is trying to expose wickedness because God is trying to show us how much the world needs him. That we should be lifting up Christ, lifting up Christ, lifting up Christ. Living out Christ. Wisdom says, you know what? I, 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 You see what's going on. What if you gave your life more to Christ? Then maybe you could be more infectious to what's going on of the answer to the problem. Because wisdom is cries out and says, obedience is the answer. Wisdom cries out and says, what if you gave more of your life to Christ? What if you stop being lukewarm? Because God has shown you there's an issue. God has shown you there's a need. But yet, God says, now can I use you for, to fulfill that need? It's crying out. It's crying out because there's an issue. And yet God says, I want you to be the problem solver and help to solve the issue. But yet, if you don't yield your life to me, then you'll continue to be the same problem. Because the answer is in Christ. But yet, do you hear wisdom? It's amazing because wisdom cries out and tells us and communicates to us to turn to Christ. But yet the question becomes, are you turning to Christ? Are you turning to Christ? We turn to all these other things. But yet, what about Christ? Does he have anything to say in it? Does he have a vote in it? Does he have a vote with your life? Does he have a vote with how your attitude is? Do he have a vote with your emotions? Does he have a vote when it comes to what you post? Does he have a vote of your response? Do you have a vote? 
because he continues having wisdom cry out because he thought he had a vote. The Bible said in latter times, people, let me read this real quick. And I'm going to close this thing down. But I really want us to understand, are we hearing wisdom? Okay, the election didn't go your way. Are you hearing wisdom? Do you hear it crying out that you shouldn't respond like that? Are you so agitated that you refuse to move forward? I thought wisdom reminded you that God is always in control no matter who's in office. But did you forget? Do you hear wisdom crying out? Okay, for those, if the election went your way, but yet you remain boastful and prideful about it. I thought wisdom said that God is in control, that it's him. And to be humble, the meek shall inherit the earth. But yet, where's the sign of meekness? Did you forget wisdom crying out? I'm just saying, and I'm listing all these things because this is a concerning to God. God is concerned about how Christians are responding to wisdom crying out in all that we do. All that we do. Because it's an opportunity for either God to get the glory or the enemy to be glorified. And if we're tuning out wisdom, then trust when I tell you God is not being glorified because the application is not his wisdom. It's a wisdom of the world. And that Wisdom is from the God of this age, 2 Corinthians 4, 4, which is not bringing you to Christ and is definitely not the light. 1 Timothy chapter 4 says, now the spirit explicitly says in the latter time, some would depart from the faith, paying attention. Notice that it says paying attention, meaning that they're paying attention to something other than wisdom of God. They're paying attention to something other than wisdom crying out. And they're paying attention to what? Deceitful spirits and the teachings of demons through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared. They forbid marriage and demand abstinence from foods that God created to receive from gratitude by those who believe and know the truth. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if received by thanksgiving, since it is sanctified by the word of God and by prayer. God said they're giving over to and paying attention to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons. Teachings of demons. I'm saying, what are you paying attention to? What are you paying attention to? And this goes to this goes so beyond. The, the situation or circumstances for today because you can utilize this because wisdom always cries out even for your marriage, for your life, for your parenting, whatever it is, wisdom cries out. But the question is not about wisdom crying out. The question is, am I hearing the cry? Am I applying it to my life? Wisdom is not crying out just to be speaking words. No, wisdom is crying out because wisdom hopes that we apply it. I remember my mother used to say, I'm not calling your name for nothing. I'm calling your name because I want you to apply what I'm saying. I'm not telling you this just to be telling you this. Because there's an understanding when wisdom cries out, the expectation is for me to apply. Why? Because I said I gave my life to the Lord. And when I give my life to the Lord, I give him permission to every area in my life to speak on it to bring light to a dark area. And I'm telling you, these sometimes circumstance, well, circumstances and situations highlight dark areas in our life. Why can't you hear wisdom crying out? Dark area, stronghold. Why are you not applying? Dark area, stronghold. 
deceiving spirits because you're deceived to actually apply your own wisdom. That's a doctrine of demons. Satan got kicked out of heaven because he leaned on his own understanding. And yet we mimic that same characteristic. So again, I asked today, man, look, I, I just want us to really get in his mind. Are we hearing wisdom? God's wisdom, not world's wisdom. I'm saying, what are you even turning to when you feel like you're in trouble? What are you turning to when you feel like uh, you're at wit's end? What what wisdom are you are you turning to? Do you actually hear the wisdom of God crying out for you? That God can help you out of the place that you're in, but because you've allowed the place to take hold of you, you no longer hear wisdom crying out. And we look to all the other things as wisdom to help us get out. But yet, that wisdom would never help us. It actually hurts us. I'm saying, where are you at? I'm saying, where are you at? Where are you at? When wisdom crying, where are you at? God is crying out. He allows her wisdom to make this sound, to make this cry to get our attention. Because we're paying attention to all the wrong things. We forgot about the gist or the center of it all is that sin has entangled. Sin has done a work and we're seeing the manifestation of sin. All these other things, man, you, we've tried those things. But yet we've never gave our life to the heart of the thing, the core of the thing, the answer to the core, the answer to the heart is in me giving my life more to Christ. That's the answer. But did you forget? Because wisdom is crying out. Your passion. You're passionate. You're passionate about what's going on. But you can be so passionate that you missed the true answer. You can be so passionate where you get caught up in the craziness and you become just as crazy up there climbing the Capitol building walls. They were passionate, but yet look what their passion got them. And I'm telling you, wisdom was crying out and saying, don't climb, don't do that. But yet they did it and some ended their life. See, because wisdom cries out and says, let us utilize that passion more in praying. Let us utilize that passion more in reading so I can fill you up with the words to say of God. That you can point people to Christ and actually be out there telling people to come to him. Christ has already climbed that wall. We just got to allow him to show us how to break it down. I'm just saying, Christ, just like the same people that's out there looting, you don't think wisdom was crying out to them and saying, this is not the answer. But yet, when you when when you allow the doctrines of demons to infiltrate your mind and put a put a put a burden on your heart, your passion can be driven to other things. And there you go in those stores looting. There you go in here doing all those things. There you go in here, uh all types of stuff because your passion is driven you to ignore wisdom instead of hearing the cry that is trying to speak to you. And I can, I'm just saying wisdom cries out and we got to be more intentional to what God is trying to communicate and how he wants to go about it. Especially when it comes to our passions, especially when it comes to, to uh, when we find ourselves in dark places, especially when things become frustrating, things become stressful because wisdom is still crying, especially during those times. And those times, sometimes wisdom says, hey, I'm crying out to you that you, may, you need to pull away. You need to fast. You need to do this. You need to connect yourself with another believer to help you chill out. Because right now, you're not in the right place. But... Do you hear wisdom crying? 
Do you hear wisdom crying? I end with that. I end with that. The answer is in Jesus. The answer is in Jesus. But yet, how are you going other ways outside of Jesus? The Bible says in John 12, verse 32, it says, man, look at that. I got it on my shirt today. If Christ be lifted up, he'll draw all. So why are we trying to go with all these other plots and schemes to draw everybody? No, the Bible tells us to answer how to draw. He said, if he be lifted up, if he be lifted up, when are you lifting him up? I don't even hear you mention Christ. You mention Christ after you state your own agenda. That's not. No, we state Christ and then we state his agenda. If we really want to make change, then we got to go about how God said, because he is change. And change begins in the heart. And he's the only one that can deal with man's heart. He's the only one that can deal with your spouse's heart. He's the only one that can deal with your kid's heart. He's the only one that can deal with uh, your friend's heart, your mom's heart, your dad's heart, your uncle, your, what, your boss's heart, your co-worker's heart. But yet, if you listen to the wisdom of the world, it will tell you to take it in your own hands. No, this is the heart of God. Again, I ask, do you hear wisdom crying out? God bless you all. This is your morning medicine. Take this prescription.